welcome, welcome, welcome to 15 Minute Dot Church, where we love God and we love others as we love ourselves. Praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Well, it's Sunday morning, August the 11th, and it's back to school time. And this is our back to school service, so let's get right on into it. But before we do, let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for providing water, food, and shelter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Well, like I said, this is the season for back to school. And we can see three different schools that God took Saul. That was his Hebrew name. Saul took him through elementary, middle, and high school before he became the Apostle Paul. Amen. The schools he went to were the schools of solitude, the school of suffering, and the school of seasoning. Amen. You see, Saul's transformation into the Apostle Paul, it took some time. You see, it all happened when he went back to school. And he went back to school in three key locations. Amen. The first place God sent, sent him to was the desert of Arabia. Amen. And in the desert of Arabia, God uses the tool of solitude. Amen. In this case, it was for three years. According to the book of Galatians, Saul slash Apostle Paul spent those three years in the Arabian desert alone with God for three years. God taught him. You see, all we got to do is just study the lives of great men and women of God in the Bible, and each one of them can point to a time that they spent alone with God. You know, they may have been surrounded by hundreds of maybe even thousands of people. But at one point in their life, they felt that God was all they had. And in their solitude, God shapes and molded them. You see, Saul slash Paul, he was old school. You see, when he entered the Arabian desert, when we went to school of solitude, he was old, old school. You see, he was raised underneath the Old Testament law. You see, when he went back to school in the desert, he went back shouting, by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Old Testament law. He went in with the Old Testament written in magic marker on his backpack, but he came out with the book of Romans engraved in his heart. Amen. In the desert, God used the tool of solitude. Next, God sends him to Damascus. And there, God uses the tool of suffering. You see, when Saul slash Paul returned to Damascus from Arabia, he was a marked man. Many people wanted to kill him. You see, the book of Acts tells us, after Paul became a follower of Jesus in Damascus, see, now we can call him Paul because he's now a, a convert to Christianity and his name has changed. Now we know him by the Apostle Paul. Amen. So from now on, we'll just call him Paul. That's what, he, that's, what it, that's what it is. Amen. See, when he came back from the desert and he went to Damascus, he started telling everybody that Jesus was the Messiah. You see? And uh, 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 because he preached that, that Jesus is the Son of God, he was in danger of being killed. So the local believers, the local Christians, you know, they thought the best way to save Paul's life was to send him away. Get him on up through. You feel me? He needed to get to get. You feel me? So what they did is they put Paul in a basket and lowered it out of window down. And then they took that basket and carried it on out of town to help him escape the killers. Amen. Now can you imagine how Paul had to feel, you know, being smuggled out of town in a basket, run down the street in the middle of the night? like some common criminal, I had to be humiliated, you know. But here's the thing. It was just the beginning of his suffering. He's got a whole lot more to endure. Amen. You know, in Acts 16, 22, it says he endured stripes from beatings, from whippings. It says Paul was stoned. 
It says he was left for dead. Also in the book of Acts, he was even suffered through a shipwreck. Oh, he's prosecuted. You know, he's thrown in prison, family. Man, Paul is cold. He's hungry. And he's thirsty. Oh, you know, they say the measure, you know, the measure of your character is what it takes to get you to quit. But I'll tell you what, Paul had a whole lot of character because he didn't quit. You feel me? God looks down and he sees us like diamonds in the rough. You feel me? And now what he's doing is he's just knocking off the rough edges. God's hammer and chisel, they ain't always pleasant. But they very, very, very important. You see, he puts us in the fire to refine us. So the impurities are just float to the top. And, and what's left is a much more valuable, a much more valuable product. You see, the sculptor, the sculptor took a block of marble and carved a beautiful horse. You know, somebody asked her. How in the world did you carve that beautiful horse? How'd you do that? And she said, easy. It was easy. I just looked at that marble block and I imagined the horse. Hmm. And then I chipped away everything that didn't look like it. Oh, you see, it's in the valley of suffering that we learn some of our best lessons. And it's God's chipping away. God's chipping away at many of us. And then thirdly, God sends Paul to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, God uses the tool of seasoning. You see, he might like, oh, what kind of seasoning is this? <laughs> How in the world do I get seasoned? Well, a seasoned Christian, okay, has some experience under the belt. And that's why I come, God sent me to Jerusalem. Amen. Now see, I'm not talking about seasoning the cast iron skillet. I ain't talking about the trusted hood seasoning meat tenderizer. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> what I'm talking about is getting ourselves ready for kingdom building. That kind of seasoning. Amen. You see, God gave the doctrine directly to Paul. You see, because Paul, he didn't have much experience. He didn't walk with Jesus for three years like Peter did. He wasn't there when Jesus healed the multitudes. But Peter was. He didn't witness the feeding of the 5,000. He wasn't there when Jesus rose. Amen. But Peter was. Paul writes in Galatians 1, 15 through verse 18. You know, Paul writes this and what Paul says is, but when God who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him amongst the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went to Arabia. Later I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas. Oh, to get acquainted with Cephas. Cephas is also known as Peter. Peter the Apostle, the beloved disciple, Saint Peter. That's who he went to Jerusalem to get acquainted with. And Paul goes on the right, he says, I stayed with him for 15 days. And for 15 solid days, they were there talking to each other, conversing with each other. Paul asked Peter, Paul says to him, he says, give me the background. He says, summarize it now. Give me the background. Tell me the whole story. Give me the detail. Don't leave nothing out. You know, wouldn't you love to be a fly on that wall? Hey, man, Peter's, I'm sure he probably starts off. Let me tell you about the time I walked on water. When I kept my eyes on Jesus, I could do it. But then when I took him off, I sunk down like a rock. You know, I can hear it now. I can imagine it right now. You see, Peter, Cephas, St. Peter, the beloved disciple, he's pouring himself into his protege, his student. Amen. Reproducing himself in him. 
You know, we all need uh, somebody like a Peter or a Cephas. See, we need a mentor. We need a teacher. We need a professor. Amen. We need to listen to somebody with a little bit more experience than us who's been at it for a while. Just like Paul had to listen to Peter. Amen. Who's been there and done that. You see, Peter just helped pull Paul up to the next level. Let me say this again. Peter helped pull Paul up to the next level. And that's just like your mentor can help pull you up to the next level. Your teacher can help pull you up to the next level. Your professor can help pull you up to the next level. You see, they can show you the ropes. And let me tell you, Paul, he gained valuable, valuable experience by listening to Peter. You see, after listening to Peter, he was then a seasoned. Paul became seasoned after he listened to Peter for the practical ins and outs of the ministry. So let me ask you, friends, how is your training or your schooling going? Are you learning to become more like Jesus? Is God transforming you? Maybe you've been on a spiritual vacation this summer. Huh? A spiritual vacation. Living for yourself, amen. Well, it's time to get back to school. It's time to sit in God's classroom under the Lord again, amen. It ain't torture, but it's the greatest pleasure and joys of life. Turn back to it. We surrender to him as your Lord and as your authority. Let him have his way with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let me ask you something. How many people out there want to live forever? Do you want to live for eternity? It's very, very simple. It only takes a matter of seconds. You see, in the book of Romans, it says, if we confess with our mouths, then we can be saved. So well, let's just go ahead on while we're here and lock it in right now. Amen. All you have to do is repeat out loud, out loud after me because it says we have to confess with our mouth. Amen. So here we go. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask for forgiveness. You died for my sins and you rose from the grave. I want to spend eternity in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, go to a Bible-believing church and tell them you said that prayer, and they'll take it from there. So let's close with the benediction. May the Lord rest rule and abide with you now, henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen, and welcome back to school. Happy school year, and God bless you. This is Pastor C.